Hello, just continuing on from the message that was cut short by my doorbell earlier and um, just want to thank you all for waiting and thank you for your patience. I'm going to continue with the one husband, one bride message. Now, the scripture that I wanted to continue with was actually in the book of John, the Gospels. And I want to show you that how it was Jesus Christ who was the husband in the Old Covenant and also the husband, the bridegroom, the same person in the New Covenant. So we're going to go to the book of John, chapter 14. <laughs> and we're going to begin at verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. He's preparing a place for his bride. The bridegroom is the one who prepares the place in his Father's house. <laughs> now, if we continue, let's go to uh, Luke chapter 5. And we're going to go in verse 33. <clears throat> this is amazing, you guys. Then they said to him, the Pharisees, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise those of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink? And he, Jesus, said to them, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. Then they will fast in those days. He just said he is the bridegroom. It's him. There's only one. This is why he was so upset with the Pharisees because they didn't know the scriptures did they they thought they knew the scriptures but all along in the book of Isaiah in Hosea it talks about the husband and the wife the bride the adulteress and they had no idea even when he mentioned the bridegroom they didn't think is that him is that the same what is he talking about but regardless God in his infinite wisdom he allowed for all of this blindness to come in part to the house of Israel until the fullness of Gentiles, which is you and I, until our, ta our time um, is completed, when all of our number, I guess, have come in, that's when the blindness is going to be removed from Israel. It's amazing, it's glorious, and um, it just goes to show how how love really should be this is the example of um love in marriage if you go to the book of um, ephesians now ephesians will make more sense now when it says in chapter five let's say please read these chapters in their full context 25 let's just read from 25 Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are his members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. We become one with the husband. When the father and mother, um, when the husband leaves the father and mother and, and gets joined to his wife, they become one flesh. Verse 31. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. See? Remember that prayer Jesus prayed in um, 
the Gospel of John in chapter 17 where he's praying to the Father that he desires his followers to become one with him like he is one with the Father. Him in the Father, the Father in him and they in us. One. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's amazing. This is a great mystery, he says in 32 verse 32. But I speak concerning the Christ and the church. It is a great mystery, you guys. It's a mystery. It's glorious. It's wonderful. You see, the promise he made to Abraham that through his seed, he will bless all the families of the earth. He had to, by his wisdom, bring that to pass. How, you know, he had the goal, then he needed objectives, he needed criteria, how it was actually going to play out. And he did it. He did it, you guys. He did it. Through Jesus Christ now, even the Gentiles can come in. It's amazing. By faith, you see, by faith. Because Abraham was the father of faith. But the law was given to Moses because he needed to establish a nation in order for a kingdom to come. And then another one is um, the kingdom of David. The covenant he made with David, who is from the tribe of Judah. Which is why Jesus Christ is also called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. It's amazing. There's so much more to the Bible than we that we um, assume, and um, it's it's so worth studying this book it, to like take your time with it all. And um, so you know, I, I doubt Muslims have come this far in my video, but if they're out there, I'd like them to question their own um, biases they have because they they worship. Let's face it, they worship Muhammad, who's lawless, who's a lawbreaker, who's a wicked adulterer. But they have a problem with the Son of Man, who's God Almighty. He's, he's, Jesus Christ is God Almighty. In the book of Revelation, that title is given to him clearly, very clear. And remember, it was Jesus himself who visited John and told him to write. And he also gave a very stark warning as well. If anyone was to mess around with this book, they'd be cursed. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1, it says, in verse 7, Behold, he is coming with clouds. Every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. You remember? In Zechariah, chapter 12, it talks about they're going to see him. They're going to recognize Jesus is the Messiah. They're going to recognize that it was them that pierced him. Not that they physically did it, but it was our sins, their sins. Because they were the adulterous wife, remember? The husband. He died for his bride. He died for her. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. Verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Like it says in Isaiah chapter 9, Mighty God's one of his titles. Oh, this is glorious. The Bible is just so much. It's about a shepherd and his sheep, the saviour and the sinners in the world, who he dies for. It's about a husband and his bride. It's the father and his wayward son. Remember the parable of the, the prodigal son? That's another study that I probably would take some time and consider sharing that with you all because there's another beautiful secret in that, a mystery to be revealed. I think it's wonderful. You see, these covenants that God did with his people, with Abraham, with Moses and what have you, with David, they all have a part to play in the bigger picture, you see. He had to find a way of redeeming all of mankind back to himself, as many as who would repent. Like now, as many who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, shall be saved. It's possible now, you know. It's wonderful. Please read the chapters of Romans 6, Romans 7, Romans 8. Please read um, Colossians chapter 2. I would recommend you read all of the book of Isaiah, you know, the 66 books, 
chapters in Isaiah. We've got 66 books in the Bible. Isaiah, I consider, and it has been said about the book of Isaiah, it's like a mini Bible. It's a mini Bible, and you can get so much from the Word of God in that one book, the book of Isaiah. So um, there you have it, you guys. Um, Jesus Christ is the husband, the one husband and the one bride. And we are the church, we are the bride, but now we are all believers. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, by faith we are grafted in. You know, it's, it's amazing, it's beautiful. He's the Lord of hosts. He's the Holy One of Israel. He's their king. <laughs> I can go on and on and on. The amazing titles that are given to the name of Jesus. He's a father. He's the lion, the lamb, the king, the husband, the man, Christ Jesus, the saviour, the shepherd, the great high priest, the son of God, the son of man. There's probably more that escapes me right now, but that's enough for now, I think. So, um, so part two is a short video, wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped to enrich your fellowship with the Lord because it really um, helps us to know him in a in a deeper way you know anyway thank you all thank you for your patience and um i'll be back soon with another message very very shortly <laughs> thank you